In today's episode, Danny from the YouTube channel Danny and Derek do board games attempts to answer the question, who's playing what now? Hello and welcome back to another episode of Who's Playing What Now, the show that tests our contestants' knowledge of which board, card, and tabletop games are the most popular as of the last 30 days. And while they try to figure that out, they win a prize for a viewer. Before we get to our contestant and our game, I just want to mention that our gameplay statistics come, as always, from Board Game Geek. They are based on the games that are getting the most logged plays on the Board Game Geek website. And specifically, it is based on the number of unique users that log plays, not necessarily the number of games logged. So let's get right into the game by introducing our guest this time, Danny from Danny and Derek Do Board Games. Danny, how are you doing? I'm awesome. I am so excited for this. I've been watching, I've been following along a little bit, so it's been, I'm, I'm like amped up for this. <laughs> well, oh, good, you've been doing your homework and studying? A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> cool, excellent. And for anyone who might not be uh, familiar with your channel, where can people find you? Yeah, so um, we, we do have a YouTube channel. So me and my boyfriend, Derek, we create content that um, is inviting to not just gamers, but also people that might be interested in gaming. And we make easy videos based on the ABCs and the one, two, threes. And right now we're trying to figure out different ways that we can utilize board games and still try to interact with both of those populations. Well, I'm gonna do my best not to completely ruin gaming for you uh, by, by, by having you try to guess which games people are playing. In this first round, you are going to try and guess which games are being played the most often. Uh, but as always, the 10 most often played games are off limits. So let's go through that list right now and see the top 10 most played games last month. At number 10 is King Domino. Yeah, this is actually one of mine and Derek's favorite. The tile placement's awesome. And as a two player game, we love to play it with the seven by seven variant. Number nine is Splendor. The bread and butter of introducing new games. And I still think even though this game is technically older with the, with the talking about the cult of the new, the, the poker chips that come with it, probably one of the best components in, in games. Number eight is Keyforge Call of the Archons. Yes, I got to play this at PAX U with a, good, uh, with a couple of friends. And at first I wasn't buying into the whole unique deck situation, but <laughs> man, like after the first game, it drew me right in and I was like, oh, which decks can I get? Like, how do they interact? So, and I stayed away, stayed away. And then PAX Unplugged came around and sucked me in. <laughs> well, let's see if you got sucked into number seven as well, which is Wingspan. No, so this is my Albatross game right now because I have not played it yet. Um, but yeah, it looks like an amazing production from Stonemeyer as, as normal. And um, Elizabeth Hargrave designed it and I'm all about supporting female designers. So I can't wait to play like this cool little engine building game with a, with a really unique theme. And uh, number six is also a somewhat interesting, unique theme, uh, Sagrada. Yeah, so this is probably one of our first one of our first few videos, but this is one of the games that, again, has beautiful uh, production quality, easy gameplay, um, very accessible when it comes to a price point, but also to teach and to learn. Um, so definitely one of our favorites, and I can see why it's pretty high up on this list. Number five, even a little bit higher, is Architects of the West Kingdom. Yes, from Garfield Games, so, uh, one of our favorite publishers. We loved Raiders, so we were pretty excited to see um, them not necessarily continue with the, the theme of Raiders, but have, have that same art by the Miko and still take that worker placement mechanic and, and, of course, the way they do, just make it more interesting with the worker investment, and then you get to, you get to <laughs> capture other people's other people's workers, so it, it, it's a great game. Okay, number four was Scythe. Yeah, so I actually have not played Scythe, but I've logged about 15 visits of, uh, 15 plays of My Little Scythe. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I do understand it just for my gaming group and how, how much me and Derek play, uh, we like the shorter games, but I, I do need to sit down and play Scythe, and I know there's few expansions and especially the the new one that came out that's almost makes it a campaign so i'm very interested in that one number three is gloomhaven oh the big game so the folks over at blue peg and pink peg 
they asked me how many gloom havens I could squat, and I, I, I don't even know if I can. <laughs> I don't even know if I can squat one, especially if they have that that insert in there that makes it like 10 pounds heavier. But yeah, another another great game that it it sucks you in, and it's almost like if you play Gloomhaven, your gaming group will probably play Gloomhaven for the rest of the year. Number two is terraforming Mars. Yes, crashing asteroids, building cities, bringing animals. I always have to bring animals to Mars. So, um, <laughs> and as, as as I guess as heavier. So this is probably on the heavier end of the spectrum for what me and me and Derek play. Mm -hmm. It's it's pretty accessible because if if you don't know what what one symbol means, you can read the card, and that's one of our our favorite things about it. And number one most played game last month was Azul. Yeah, we actually just played this last night. It's actually right here. Um, it's it's definitely a staple in our collection. I haven't even put it back on the shelves yet, so um, <laughs> that is not surprising at all. All right, so are you prepared to win a prize for a viewer? Yes, I'm always prepared. If that means, if that means more gaming for more people, let's do it. <laughs> I love the attitude. All right. This month's randomly selected viewer who posted a comment on last month's video with the hashtag who's playing what now is Laurent Colin, who posted the comment that we have been playing The Captain is Dead because it has a lot of replayability and our late night favorite is Hogwarts Battle. Laurent Colin is who you are playing for. And the prize that you're gonna be earning for Laurent is gonna be a gift certificate to the Board Game Geek Geek Store. Yeah, they have so many cool random promos and like little component holders and all that good stuff. Oh, so. they got promos, uh, components, actual artwork related to games. There's just a metric ton of stuff available. And Laurent is gonna be able to get something, but exactly what is gonna depend how well you do in the game. And the only way we're gonna figure that out is to get started with round number one, which we'll do next. All right, Danny, round one is simple. I have a list of the top 1,000 most played games last month. And all you gotta do is pick the games that you think the most different people played, and you're gonna win a penny per player towards our prize pool. Make sense? Makes sense. All right, so whenever you're ready, go ahead and hit me with your pick for number one. So number one is a game when I played it, it was called Quacksalber von Quidlinburg, or some some German form of that. But um, it just got released by North Star Games, and you might know it as Quacks of Quidlinburg. So um, that's going to be my first pick. That is a fantastic pick first pick because that came out on the list of thousand games came in at number 23 with 1,422 people logging games starting us off with over $14 right there in the price pool. Nice. There you go, there you go Laurent. We got at least $14. I think you can get a couple, couple <laughs> component trays with that. <laughs> we could stop here. <laughs> All right. I'll see you later. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's move right on to your pick for number two. All right, this is a game that's always with me, either in my backpack or quiver, and it's because I love to see how different groups play it. So I'm gonna say my number two pick is The Mind. The Mind is almost the best pick you could have made because it comes in at number 12 with wow. 1,792 different people. So boom, there's another almost $18 added for a total of $32.14 already in that prize pool. Yeah. Wow. You awesome. are just, yeah, you're rocking it. So I'm on fire. Let's keep this roll going. <laughs> let's keep and going. Go right into number three. All right. Um, number three, um, I kind of deviated off of my, my thinking, and I thought, what do me and Derek play a lot? Um, and one of our favorite two player games is Patchwork. Well, even though it was a different way of approaching the game, it was still a fantastic pick because it comes in at number 20 on the list with 1,000. 475 people playing it, bringing the prize pool up with two more questions still to go in the first round. Prize pool's already up to $46.89. So, nice. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Right. So now, now we seriously could stop here. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be sad. <laughs> but let's keep going now. Let's keep uh, going. For pick number four. Number four, um, I know we had mentioned the North Sea trilogy and 
one of our favorite games at two all the way up to the five if you have the expansion five or six players is raiders of the north sea raiders of the north sea that that pick actually surprises me a little but it shouldn't because it is still within the top 100 here at number 65 with 751 people logging plays of it taking us up to $54.40 with still nice. one more pick to go so yes one more pick yeah all right azul stained glass i know that's kind of the, the new hotness another amazing pick number 16 on the what? list 1598 players playing it so at the end of round one you have just nailed it with seventy dollars and 38 cents in the price pool <laughs> this one's for you laurent let's go we still got more money to make <laughs> yes all right yes we're gonna do that when we come right back for round two with a brand new game And in this round, we're going to play a brand new game. Since you know uh, you and Derek do the uh, ABCs and one, two, threes, uh, it seems like you guys like taking uh, three things and putting them in order. So I figured we kind of carry on with that thought. And I'm going to give you three games. And I want you to put them in order from least played up to most okay. played. Okay. Each one you get in the correct position will score you a dollar and 67 cents gotcha. towards the price pool. Here is your first list. Put these in order from least played to most played game. There is Dinogenics, Dinosaur Island, and Dinosaur Tea Party. Ooh. So I'm gonna put Dinogenics at the bottom only because I think it just came off of its Kickstarter production. Um, next, man, I know Dinosaur Island, people love Dinosaur Island and expansions just came out, but Dinosaur Tea Party is more of a party style game. Uh, I think I'm going to put, so it's going to need to go Dinogenics, Dinosaur Tea Party, and then Dinosaur Island. The actual ranking from least played to most played was Dinosaur Tea Party uh, with 100 players logging games. Then Dinogenics for number two with 167 people playing uh, logging games. And then Dinosaur Island uh, was the most played with 1,184 people logging games. All right. Well, uh, not bad. I got, I got one, right? So yes, you got the first two switched around, but the third one, Dinosaur Island, yes, that was the most played out of the three. Right. So there we go. Awesome. So set number two will cure what ails you because we have here Pandemic Iberia, Pandemic Legacy Season 1, and then Pandemic Rising Tide. Oh, man. All right. So I know people say Iberia has those in and out modules that you can play with. And then oh, Legacy Season 1 was probably one of our favorite board gaming experiences. And then we have not played Rising Tide yet, and that's the newest. So I'm going to say Rising Tide at the bottom. OK. Uh, I'm going to say Iberia second. And then at the very top, I'm going to say Legacy Season 1. All right. So you have Rising Tide, the least played, Iberia, second most played, and Pandemic Legacy Season 1 as the most played. Yes. Perfect score right there. Yeah. Absolutely. Rising Tide had 125 people play it, Iberia, 264, and Legacy Season 1, 874. So question number three is going to be a little bit spooky, all right? Because mm. we have Arkham Horror, Arkham Horror, the card game, versus Eldritch Horror. Oh, man. Oof. So we have not played any of these. Um, I've seen people playing them, and I know it's huge, and I think we would love it because of the storytelling and the moving around. So this one's going to be a shot in the dark. Uh, okay. But I'm going to say, uh, let's say Arkham Horror, the regular one, then Eldritch Horror, and then the highest would be Arkham Horror, the card game. 
Nailed it again. Oh, that is yeah. absolutely <laughs> correct order. <laughs> Arkham Horror had 143 players. Eldritch Horror, 418. And Arkham Horror, the card game, 1,169 players for another chunk of change added to the pot there. Wow. All right. Now, now I'm really glad that we didn't stop right at the end of <laughs> round one there. This, this is really exciting. Okay. Let's see how much farther you can take it. Question number four. At this point, I ran out of themes, so I started <laughs> looking at some other themes. So tell me which of these games, uh, how these ranked. <clears throat> the first one on the list is a game called Planet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second one is a game called Catch the Moon. Mm -hmm. right? And the third one is Among the Stars. Uh, I see what you did there. Oh, clever, okay. clever, Thank clever chat. All right, so it was Planet. I think that's the blue-orange game with the cubes. And then Catch the Moon is the dexterity game and Among the Stars. Correct. Uh, let's see. We have not played Among the Stars. I got to demo Planet very briefly, but I think it's... I don't think it's out yet. Oh, okay. So I'm going to put Planet at the bottom. Okay. And then... Among the Stars, and then Catch the Moon, because that game is awesome. Unfortunately, this time, uh, Among the Stars was played the least with 72 players. Uh, Catch the Moon with 126 players was next, and Planet had the most with 191. But I'm not <laughs> shedding a tear for you, though. <laughs> because you can't win in, them all, right? Can't win yeah, them all. Exactly. Going into the last question here, we are in really good shape. So let's get right on to our final question. So for number five... We have the Quacks of Quidlinburg, okay, which you already know now based on your previous question where exactly that ranked. A game called Q-Birds, that's C-U, capital B-I-R-D-S, Q-Birds. Okay. And then the last one, Chicken Cha-Cha-Cha. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I want to just put chicken cha 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 at the very top just yeah, because well, it deserves yeah. it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, Q birds. Uh, so yeah, I'm, let's. <laughs> so I'm gonna put. <laughs> let's put chicken cha 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 at the bottom, even though that's not what it deserves. And let's go Q birds, and then let's go quacks. All right, well, your ranking of chicken cha-cha-cha results in cha-cha-ching because, once again, you nailed it. That's absolutely the correct order. Chicken cha-cha-cha had 37 people play it. Q-Birds had 160. And Quacks of Quidlingburg, however you pronounce it, 1,422. <laughs> and that brings the grand total for this game to $87.08, which I believe is a new record for the game, or yeah. at least really darn close up there. <laughs> Wow! So I hope you enjoy, Lauren. I tried my best. Um, if chicken cha 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 is, <laughs> if it's there in the in the BGG market, uh, definitely try to check it out. <laughs> I I think that's fair. Yeah, I, I think that a chicken cha 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 deserves to be purchased uh, with some of the winnings if it's in there. <laughs> I'm about to go buy it like right now. It's going to be like 39 people played, 30, 40 people played by the end of by the end of this year. Watch. <laughs> Well, Danny, before you do go off to, to find a copy of Chicken Cha Cha Cha, uh, tell us just, uh, again, uh, kind of uh, where people can find you and what's something that you have coming up uh, next. Um, you can definitely find us on Twitter. Um, I've been doing something every Monday called hashtag Tabletop Twitter Talk, and mm -hmm. I do um, a, a poll about a specific um, topic in the board gaming or tabletop industry. So definitely check us out. That's the easiest way to reach us. And then of course on Instagram, I always post in the stories um, of all the games that we're playing. Um, I've been trying to get more of my friends into gaming so you can see me bringing my quiver and my game bags to the bars and trying to get them involved and all that good stuff. So yeah, on Instagram and Twitter, feel free to follow us at Danny and Derek. And then, of course, if you can, check out our YouTube channel uh, at Danny and Derek Do Board Games. Excellent. Well, Danny, it's always a pleasure to, to speak with you. I'm hoping to see you at least a couple of the conventions again this year. And um, in the meantime, take care. And thanks so much for joining me this time. Yeah, of course. If I see you, we're playing Chicken Cha Cha Cha. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I will have it in the bag. <laughs> All right. All right. 
for more Who's Playing What Now episodes, click the card that's right up there. And if you were this month's winner, be sure to check this video's description for instructions on how you can claim your prize. And for everyone else watching, if you want to enter to potentially be the viewer that my contestant is playing for next month, well, all you gotta do is add a comment in the little comments section below answering the question of what games you've been playing the most recently, or really anything else that you want to say. As long as you say it with the hashtag, who's playing what now? Be sure to include that hashtag. And we will be drawing a winner randomly from all the eligible comments when we record next month's episode. But until then, I've been Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise and Board Game Geek. And uh, let's go play some games. So Laurent Colin is up at bat. Well, actually is next to bat because you're up to bat. <laughs> Laurent Colin is who you're playing for, Derek. All right. Danny. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> That's okay. We get, we get confused all the time. We, we, we respond to either or. <laughs> um.